Call the member for goals time. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Well, process. Wow. What a great thing to see, people being appointed based on merit rather than ideology. This bill, as I understand it, would ensure that the Attorney-General must hold an open and accountable advertised recruitment process to ensure that appointments are made on merit and not through party political largesse. And that's a good thing. The bill, I think, should be supported, but it also represents an opportunity to raise a key issue in relation to commissioners that we don't have and specifically a commissioner that I think is well overdue, and that's an LGBTQIA plus human rights commissioner. Specifically, there are currently commissioners on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander social justice issues, age discrimination, disability discrimination, children, race, sex discrimination, and human rights. These are standalone commissioners with a statutory mandate and resources for their area of expertise and experience, but there is no commissioner for our LGBTIQA plus community. The arrangements, I think, under the commission for that community are inadequate. Traditionally, the human rights of the LGBTIQA plus community were part of the human rights commissioner's portfolio, but with that portfolio also holding religious freedom in recent history, there's been a conflict, I think, between those two areas. We know in the last parliament that this led to a toxic debate about, uh, that caused great distress to members of the LGBTIQA plus community, particularly trans people, uh, compounding mental health issues for children in this community particularly. And I think for that reason that direct representation is needed. The absence of this specific commissioner, I think, diminishes the reality of the community that I'm talking about and the discrimination that these members of our community experience from day to day. Not having a specific commissioner presents this community as a low priority and overshadowed by other forms of discrimination which do have a dedicated commissioner under this commission. The absence of a specific role, I think, means that no one at the Human Rights Commission has the resources or the specific experience to advocate and articulate the concerns of this community in terms of legislation, policy reform or public education. It also means that people who are members of our LGBTIQA community have no one specific that they can go to if they experience discrimination or may be confused or deterred from lodging a complaint as they feel that they are not specifically catered for. Now we see evidence internationally that culture wars against the LGBTIQA community are getting worse. And in this country, we've seen it too. Debates in this place around trans transgender women in sport, debates in the public arena about pride jumpers in the NRL, about books in, in schools, uh, about sacking teachers in faith school environments. In recent events uh, in the public arena, for example, in Victoria, a plan for a rainbow light exhibition at the War Memorial had to be cancelled because of threats against the staff. All of these things, I think, lend weight to the cause for having a specific commissioner to cater for this community. I note that a recent survey by Just Equal that surveyed 2,500 LGBTQIA plus people across Australia showed that 84 per cent supported a direct commissioner and allies of the community, 81 per cent, also supported a specific commissioner. This, I think, is an opportunity to achieve that through this legislation. And with respect to members of the Goldstein community who have advocated to me for this, I stand here on your behalf today. And I also would like to acknowledge, uh, as a mark of respect, my colleague, the member for Brisbane, who has also advocated on this and I believe will move a second reading amendment. 
Thank you, Deputy Speaker.